WGN Morning News at 9. Good morning, Toomey. How are you? Good morning, you guys. You know, with so many of these special days that happen in September, we almost missed Uncle Sam Day. And when oh. I found out, it's not necessarily a tribute to the iconic Uncle Sam as we know it, but recognition of guys named Sam who happen to be uncles. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> yep. You're all Sam's. Oh. That's high pants, Sam. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Hangover yeah. Sam, Mrs. Beasley Sam. I yeah. Can't. Wow. Oh, Sam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that's Sam. Wilderness <laughs> Sam. <laughs> and the most patriotic of all Sams. Oh, and of look course, at this. Whoa. That guy, scary Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Baby's too know? young to know that guy's frightening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just right. Sam. Uncle that's, Sam. Uh, Thanks, Dad. That's great, Toby. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Now on the morning news, info that you can use, it's time for nine at nine. All right, number nine, fish actually are not that dumb. Many people assume they are. A study yeah. from a German university found that stingrays and cichlids, which is one of the largest categories of fish, can add and subtract. Mm. All it takes is a little incentive, treats. They performed a study using two different photos of shapes. Blue meant add one, yellow meant add, subtract one. After some training, the fish were able to quickly uh, or correctly swim to the photo that added the correct amount of shapes to the original photo they were shown. Even though the calculations didn't go higher than the number five, Five. Scientists said they were still impressed because fish don't have a cerebral cortex. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, don't really I really don't get it either. But uh, motivated by treats. Motivated by food. Yeah. yeah. Number eight, the Range Rover was introduced in 1970. It was built as a car for all reasons because it could go fast and also tow a lot of weight if someone wanted to use it on a farm. And of course, today the Range Rover, pricey four x four, used mostly in the city and suburbs. When it first came out, it was considered a work of art, so much so that they put one in the Louvre. Huh. Considered one of the finest examples of automotive engineering. In fact, the Range Rover is the only vehicle ever to be on display at the Louvre huh. in Paris. So, instead of, of riding art. in that station wagon all those years in the 70s, we could have been riding in the Range, Range Rover. I didn't know it was that yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. would have changed things. Yeah. 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 Blame your parents would. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly would have changed. For all yeah. four of yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, our parents failed us. Yeah, we had the Plymouth did. Voyager, man. Those yeah. were everywhere. The, the, remember mm -hmm. the, the Plymouth Voyager yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Mm. A lot of time in that car. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Good times. All right, number seven. You guys tip, clip your toenails lately? Stop. Yeah, I did mine last night, and it made me realize that I'm always clipping my fingernails more often than my toenails. Oh. So I looked into it and it turns out that fingernails grow 3.5 millimeters per month on average and toenails only grow 1.5 millimeters per month. So that's why it might be a while before I have to tip my clone, uh, toenails yeah. again. So it's, for the fingers go twice as fast almost yeah. as your toenails. That's good information. That is. I'm just yeah. grateful that the producer pulled finger video. We didn't for want that. you to be disturbed. <laughs> and not you. any video of those people that grow uh, their fingernails. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. He's back tomorrow. He's back tomorrow. He's back tomorrow. Andy, right, Andy. sorry All you right. had to sit through that. Number six, if you're looking for a new vacation spot, look no further than the archipelago of Azores. Well, it's not of the Hawaii of Europe. They need not to give that to Azores. us. Azores, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. I looked at that, I was like, Keep okay, I'm not going to say that you right for a while. That. It's a, a group of nine naturally formed islands from volcanoes, roughly 900 miles off the coast of Portugal. And the island boasts exotic rainforests, white sand beaches, geysers, and volcanic lakes. About a quarter of a million people live there. It won the 2021 World Travel Travel Award for Leading Adventure Tourism Destination. Mark Twain even wrote about the Azores in his travel book, The Innocents Abroad. Cool. Oh, good for him. That looks neat. Number five, one unexpected hobby has stood the test of time for the royal family. Collecting stamps. Oh. King George V is the founder of the family's collection. Known as the Collector King, he started this collection around 1840. He apparently spent up to three afternoons a week on his collection. He passed it down to King George VI and then to Queen Elizabeth II, who both built upon the collection extensively. It is so rare that the Smithsonian said it had trouble picking which ones it liked best for an exhibit. The collection is estimated uh, to be worth more than $100 million. Some stamps are among the last surviving pieces. So the royal family time. has $100 million just in, in stamps. Just in stamps. Yeah. Yeah. stamps. They're loaded. And a lot of land. Seems like 
it's a little unfair for the average stamp collector. They're like... Because they're on the stamps. They're on, they're on, they're on the getting copies ahead of time. You yes. like this? You like the way you look yeah. in it? And then they... That doesn't yeah. seem right. Look at nice Paul Conrad stamp. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, he likes, the, that. he likes the precious moments statues and yeah. the spoons from other 50 yeah. states. All kinds of small figurines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's big into those. Yeah, okay. Precious moments, so yeah, really those are underrated. Your favorite. Yeah, those are your favorite. Mm -hmm. All right, number four. Here's a question for you guys. How long do you think it takes a pineapple to grow? Oh, that's a great question. Any guesses? Pineapple right. to grow. Andy, what's your guess? I'm gonna say three months. All right, three yeah. months. I'm gonna go just because it's a news. I'm gonna say a year. Oh, all right. Robin, what's your guess? I forgot. I don't care. All right. <laughs> but let me give you the months. answer. Okay. Right. It takes two years. Two years. Oh, yeah. Starts as a couple hundred flowers that develop into a berry, come to form one big fruit, two years. Two years. Uh, so, you know, they're pretty reasonably priced for something. Yeah, that, for something uh, that, that takes two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah. That's not bad. All right. Okay. All right, number three, scientists in the western suburbs are trying to solve a decades-old mystery, the concrete book. A German artist self-published this masterpiece of modern art in 1971. 26-page sketchbook encased in 20 pounds of concrete only 100 were published. One of the head librarians at the University of Chicago bought one for herself to see if the sketchbook is really in there, but breaking it into pieces isn't really an option. X-rays and ultrasound both turned up nothing. Huh. So now they've teamed up with the Argonne Lab uh, National Laboratory in Lamont. They're still huh. experimenting with it, and they hope that a super-powered photon X-ray will reveal the sketchbook inside. Yeah. So you can't just chip it open, it would ruin the book, I assume. Right. Have to have That's a point. super sturdy book bag, too. Yeah, yeah that right. That's yeah. a conundrum. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really up in the <laughs> class <laughs> level today. Yep. Really nice. Yep. Uh, all right, number two. Uh, last night was my personal hygiene night. Yep. Oh, gosh. And in addition to my toenails, I also trimmed my nose hairs. Ugh. And that got me thinking, if I didn't trim them, how long would they get? So I did some Googling. Turns out one nose hair follicle grows more than six feet of hair in a lifetime. Six feet if you didn't trim them up thinking of letting them all grow up <laughs> yeah. yeah for a little while after yeah that. that's pretty fascinating right yeah, it is fascinating. six feet it'd be as like you'd be walking down the road and if yeah. you're five two you're yeah. stepping on it yeah. you're yeah. dragging yeah. it around you probably clean floors with yeah it. you could you really want to braid it so that's just some helpful information yeah, for well, everybody thank you. who's looking to do something different yeah. Yeah, this weekend. Number one, here's a song that was a pop hit in Italy for Adriano Celentano, who is huge over there. He's sometimes yeah. credited for introducing rock and roll to Italy. And in this song from back in the 70s, he wanted to make it sound like it's in English and to prove that Italians will listen to anything that sounds American. Okay, so let's take a listen. I guess these, these aren't really English words here. It's just gibberish. All right. Icon in Italy. But this is what he kind of ah. stuff he used to do. So Adriano Celentano. If you want to go ahead and Google. Well, why are you why are you rushing us, Dan? Yeah. I mean this we could fill oh, up yeah. the whole hour. Oh, really? Oh, she's got something to say. I'm trying to wrap it up a little bit here, but oh, oh. look at her, yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah, it does. 